Once again, just to echo Father uh, Jude's beautiful expression of gratitude for our grandparents, we want to extend you our gratitude and our love and our promise of prayers for you. You uh, have persevered in time and in wisdom, and you offer in a particular way to grandchildren a beautiful and a joyful relationship. What a special thing that is. So thank you to you. And for those of you who may not have had children but are of grandparent age. Thank you for the wisdom and the support and the love that you share with us. We depend on it. We are so grateful. It's interesting that the gospel that we hear today, Jesus says, he says to those, the crowds, he says, anyone with ears to hear, listen. Now, we might think he's talking about these kinds of ears, but I think what he's talking about is the ears of our heart, the ears of our faith, because what is being revealed in this is information that needs to be understood as information that comes and has been revealed by God. And so these three parables that we have for our reflection today, the two shorter ones would talk about what the kingdom of God is like, and the parables give us little insights into different pieces and snippets of the kingdom because you can't say everything about the kingdom of God just like that. That's what we take care of all year to keep talking about the kingdom of God. Of particular importance, though, is the one that is a little bit longer and the one that gets explained. Some of the... <coughs> Allergies. Some of the, the commentators will say, Actually, you don't even need to explain that one because Jesus explains it himself. Do you understand it clearly enough that I don't have to explain it to you? This is your chance. Actually, someone at the last Mass said, Yes, Father. And I said, Oh, thank you. But I'm going to say a couple things. In another parable, the seed itself being sown was the word of God. Today, Jesus says in his parable, it says the seed of God that is thrown by the Son of Man, that is thrown by Jesus, that is thrown by God, are the children of light. That's you and me. We are children of light. That means we have been baptized, we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have a destination that is heaven. And that is where we're going, so Jesus is pretty specific about that. But then Jesus talks about another kind of seed. And he says the second kind of seed which produces weeds, the source of which has been sown by the devil. And it talks about the end time, it talks about heaven and hell. So one of the things I think that is good for us to know in the depths of our heart is there, are, there is the reality of hell and there is the reality of evil in the world. Many of us know, oh my goodness, you don't have to say much about that, it's almost self-evident. But there are a couple of things about this parable which I think are very interesting for us to hear. First of all, that after the good seed is sown in the daylight when everyone sees what's going on, then you hear that in the night, in the darkness, in secrecy, in deceptiveness, there is an enemy that comes and sows other seed always in darkness, always in deception. And then it's interesting also that these, the, the grains of wheat and the weeds grow up together and they are, the weeds are not recognized right away. As a matter of fact, we hear that they're only recognized when they begin to see the seeds forming. So the wheat, we know what look, wheat looks like, but seeds that are weeds. And so we know that Jesus can talk about wheat, the good stuff, that bears kingdom fruit, and the other seeds that bear no good uh, anything for the kingdom of God. So there are different kinds of fruit. One that bears fruit that is good for the kingdom of God, that is good for the children of God, 
And I think a beautiful explanation of that is in Galatians, St. Paul's letter to Galatians chapter 5. If you want to look at it, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. If you wonder what the good fruits of, of us is called, it's the fruits of the Spirit. Joy, patience, mercy, kindness. And the fruits of the evil one are everything that's against that. Selfishness, living for myself, making life difficult for others. And I think another understanding is that I think we in our own lives know that we are living among weeds. We wish that some situations, some people we might think are like weeds that would just go away. And we think if they went away, then we would feel so much better. We'd be so much more at peace. And it's true. So it's interesting what Jesus says. No, 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 you, you, you're not going to get rid of the weeds until the harvest, until the harvest. So I know what that means for you and me is that we have to put up with the weeds. We're never going to get rid of them. Have to put up with them, learn how to live with them in patience and kindness, in mercy. But I think perhaps another sign might be that sometimes we think that maybe in our own lives, even though we are striving to live lives of light in kindness and compassion, that we might find some parts of us that we feel are like weeds and we wish we could pull them out and get rid of them. Those parts of our life, maybe sins that just don't go away, some things that we would love to get rid of, but they just don't go away. And I think that perhaps some of those things we're going to have to struggle with for the rest of our lives. I know myself, I know that. But I think that St. Paul, in our second reading, gives us a beautiful insight into what sustains us, what gives us strength. He says that the Spirit of God who dwells in us, of the children of light, right from the moment of our baptisms, it groans, it groans that might come to fulfillment. Sometimes we don't even know how to pray, but we ask the Spirit of God that is within us to be stirred up and give us strength, give us power, give us encouragement. It's the Spirit of God that we depend on to keep us, keep faithful and to keep be persevering in our lives, even though sometimes we get tired of it. Oh my goodness, we can get tired of it. Of course, for those of us who come to celebrate the Eucharist, we hear God's word and he's kind of helping us to lead us towards heaven. We also receive the gift of the Eucharist, body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. Now, does it get any better than that? Does it get any better than that? So I think the Lord wants us to be encouraged by the word we hear today kind of names the reality in the world, it names ultimate endings. It is a word of encouragement for us. And I think a, a word to encourage us and say, don't give up despite the fact that there seems to be so much darkness, so much deception, that I can't get anything, everything out of my life that I'd love to. Let us bear together, asking the Spirit of God to give us peace and joy. Thank you.